So today I'm going to install a new carburetor in my Onan Marquee Gold 5500 generator. It's in my 2001 Bounder. After a lot of troubleshooting with my friend and his brother over the phone, we determined that it's definitely a carburetor issue, despite what the RV shop said. They think it's a stuck valve and the estimate for repair, $1,300. So I called Cummins Onan to identify the exact replacement part. Then I ordered it from Amazon. It cost just a little under 350 bucks. It comes as a complete kit. The one piece carburetor and a packet with gaskets. All nice and shiny. This is the altitude adjustment. The one on the original carburetor is broken. throttle a little rod and spring connect to this it's the tricky part of the installation so before I ordered the carburetor I ordered this tune-up kit that includes a air filter a fuel filter two spark plugs oil filter and oil okay let's open up the cover and get started Lily wants to help out too First, I'm going to clamp the fuel line and I'm going to drain the float bowl. Looks good. Remove the air filter. Pretty burn looking after all the troubleshooting. Next, I'll disconnect the wires. These two are keyed differently, so you can't get them wrong when you hook them back up. This one's going to need a little coaxing. There we go. All right, now I'll remove the air filter case. All of them are 10 millimeters, making it very convenient. All right, what do we have here? A little bit of clearance on the top. There we go. And we've got a the intake hose here on the bottom pull out here we go now we can see the old carburetor let's take a closer look you can see how the knob on the altitude adjustment is broken and it was not working properly during our troubleshooting that may be the culprit we replaced the fuel filter but that's the only part that's new all right let's take it out first I need to disconnect the fuel line in case there's fuel in there. Yeah. That'll work. Just a few drips. There we got it. A little bit of fuel in there. Now you can see how the carburetor slides on those two bolts. 
I can't just pull it out though yet. I need to disconnect the little rod, throttle rod, and the spring very carefully. Push it on through somehow. There we go. The top one's already loose because it was not reinstalled properly. Now the tricky part is to disconnect this rod here. I have to get to the other side. Okay, sliding on back on a little bit. Take a look at it. So. Okay, to get the clearance here is part of the problem. bit of a finagle and she's loose all right so this is the old carburetor not very pretty the old and the new carburetor let's hope it works let's open up the gasket Yep. Okay, let's replace the gasket. It's a spacer here, it looks like. Pretty clean. And there's a second gasket. It's gonna take a, oh, here it comes. Oh, good. Well, fortunately, it wasn't stuck on there. And a little bit of cleaning to do. There we go. Not bad. The gasket surface looks pretty clean, but just to be safe, I'm going to use a little denatured alcohol get any dust or residue off. A little bit came off. Okay, let's pop on the new gaskets. Number one, followed by the spacer. Looks clean. And then the second gasket. I think we're ready to install the new carburetor. Well, let's see if it fits. Uh-oh, I see something that's not gonna work. It's a different connection for the fuel filter. Hmm. So I called the Cummins Parts Department and they confirmed that this is indeed the correct carburetor for this Onan generator. And then I asked about this incompatible filter. Well, I was informed that most of these units have filters that are before the fuel pump, underneath the carriage. So I checked it out. Yep, looks like there are two fuel filters, one before the fuel pump and a second one before the carburetor. Fortunately, there's enough rubber fuel line here to attach it to the carburetor without a filter. I cleaned the dirt off the fuel pump and there is a small filter in front of it. Therefore, I don't need a second filter in front of the carburetor. Before I reinstall the air filter, I'm going to hook up the fuel line. I don't need this fuel filter here because it there's one before the fuel pump. Keep 
just enough fuel line to hook it up. No. Now I can install the air filter unit. During my investigation of the two fuel filters and the strange connector for the solenoid, I totally missed the fact that there's a missing gasket in the kit. This one here on the original carburetor was not included in the kit that was sent to me. I called Cummins about this problem and they confirmed that it is not included in the kit and I would have to order it separately. So I put in an order and it should arrive this afternoon. Meanwhile, I'll use the old one for now. I am determined to test out the carburetor. Let's give it a try. Clean it up a little bit. I think that'll work for now. All right, the new carburetor is in place, but before I secure it with the air filter housing, I need to reattach the throttle rod here and the little spring inserts first and then the rod arm here goes in this hole get the right angle to get it in there there it goes there we go spring it in the right position there we go Okay, and while it's still accessible, let me hook up the bottom spring of the throttle. There we got it. Slide it out and get the bottom end of the rod in. The grommet there. the spring came out I think I can get that when it's in place let's see if that's possible there we go got it wow now that was a challenge. A little metal spacer here, sleeve, I guess. I need to take it off so I can put the gasket there. Reinsert it, ready to go. First, the third gasket, not included in the kit. Top front, reinstall the air filter housing. Popped in there. Make sure all those sleeves are back in the holes. Bolt it back on. Put the nuts back on loosely. Get the bolts in there. Tighten it. All right. Make sure the choke and throttle are working. I check the fuel line here. Make sure it's still snug after all the manipulation. All right. Looks like the altitude adjustment set a little high. We're at sea level here. Make sure the float bowl drain is closed, and it is. Now for the electrical. I'll start out with this uh, questionable connector that is not keyed. 
Now yeah, we've got yet another problem. Incompatible wire connector. One is oval and the other is round and it's not keyed the same. It won't go in. Drat. So I called the Cummins parts department for a third time to ask them what's the deal with this connector to the solenoid. Is there a right way or a wrong way to put it in? And the answer is no, there isn't. Although it looks like a keyed connector, it does not matter which direction you insert it. Although the connector on the solenoid are different colors on the old and the new carburetor, as you can see here, they are the exact same shape. I find it strange that they are not keyed, but at least one cannot make a mistake. Make sure it goes in good. There it goes. All right, and the two different sized connectors. The bigger one here and the smaller one here. That went good. Now for the air filter. There we go. To put the cover on. Gotta fit in these little notches up here. I believe it's fully assembled, ready to prime the fuel pump and give her a start. It runs, but then it quits. Let me see what the uh, code is. It's one followed by four blinks, 14. All right, I'll have to check that in the manual. Error code 14, engine governor unable to maintain rated frequency. Corrective action, see an authorized own and dealer. Well, that's of no help. Before I take this in the shop, I'm gonna, I'm try, gonna try one, one more, more thing. thing. 